What's up guys, I'm back with another video. Today, I'm going to talk about why I'm skeptical and not very confident of the Atlanta Hawks coming into this next season. They made a lot of moves, a lot of interesting moves that improved their team, but it's a lot of offensive moves and not a lot of defense, and that's one of the things I'm skeptical about. And also, it's a very deep roster now, and somebody's going to get lost in the sauce, and I'm very interested to see who is that person that gets left out and doesn't have the production they think they're going to have. They signed um, a lot of big contracts, a lot of money that was spent in this offseason with Danilo Gallinari and Boyan Bajanovic. They drafted um, Onyeka Okongu. What does that mean for Clint Capella? And with all these moves, what does it mean for the two top 10 draft picks that they picked in last year's draft at Cam Renish and DeAndre Hunter? Does it stunt their growth at players? Will they produce as much as, they, as we thought they were going to coming into this year? There's a lot of questions, especially about those two with all these new players coming in and how it will affect their minutes and their growth as players in this league. If you like this type of content, like and subscribe on the video if you haven't already. Let's get right into it. First thing I'm going to talk about is their two big signings of Bayan Bogdanovich and Danilo Gallinari. Now, Danilo Gallinari had a great season with the Oklahoma City Thunder, averaging 19 points on very good shooting splits, but I just don't know how he fits with this Atlanta Hawks team. It sounds like he's going to come off the bench behind John Collins, and I was just really confused hearing that uh, after I saw how much money they paid him. It's just really weird how, uh, that they paid that much for a bench player, and I feel like they could have got a cheaper option or somebody in the draft or uh, something different like that. And it's just a lot of money for him to be coming off the bench. And he doesn't really need what, uh, he doesn't really provide with what you guys need uh, off the bench for that power forward spot. They need more of like a defensive player or a catch and shoot player at that position. Danilo Lanari is a good catch and shoot player, but he plays zero defense whatsoever and is a liability on that side of the ball. But all in all, he's a, he's a really good scorer, a really good shooter, so he's um, a good addition to the team. But I really didn't think it was what they needed at the time. Now, Bojan Bogdanovich. Bogdanovich is a great player as well, a good scorer and a decent defender to be alongside Trey Young. But I feel like that was Cam Reddish's role that he was going into. Cam Reddish is a very good player defender. You can see the, you can see the traits and the potential of him on that side already. And you you saw him getting better as a scorer at the end of the year when he got a little bit more opportunity. So it was really confusing to, to see them go out there and match. The offer sheet that the Sacramento Kings put out there for Bojan Bogdanovic. So that was really weird to me as well. I felt like the Bojan Bogdanovic one made a little bit more sense than the Danilo one because he plays def decent defense as well. And um, although I'm a big Cam Reddish fan, he didn't show a lot in his rookie year, so they may have uh, not given up on him, but wanted to, wanted somebody else to come in there before he come, comes into that role and becomes that player that can play alongside Trey Young. So I get it more than the Danilo one, but both of them were really confusing because I like th these players that are in those positions already. Like Cam Reddish, DeAndre Hunter's kind of a stretch forward, small forward. John Collins is a great player. And I feel like they were kind of like uh, signing and trading for people that are, are that they already have pieces, potential pieces for the for that position already. But it is potential, and they may not fulfill it. So these are really two good signings, but they were confusing, especially the Danilo one, for how much money they're giving him for him to come off the bench. The last player and piece I'm gonna talk about in this video is the biggest piece, the, their superstar. The reason why they have the confidence that they're gonna succeed in making all these moves, and that is Trey Young. Trey Young is a 29 and nine player in his second season. That is insane. He was an all-star starter in his second season. I know the East was a little bit weak, but you still can't take that away from a second year player. You know what I'm saying? So Trey Young is a great player, but what I'm looking for from him is being a little bit more of a leader. I don't know how good of a leader he was last year. And in that Atlanta Hawks locker room and you can't expect him to be a great leader but with all these veteran players he's still the best player and he has to be able to kind of take control of that locker room a little bit and uh, not not turn on his teammates not saying he does that but if you're gonna be in this spot and your organization and these uh, and these players are expecting to make the playoffs you can't just you know the flashiness and all that's not going to work anymore you really have to be an efficient player show up in these big moments and i believe he can but i just haven't seen it yet and that's why i'm skeptical of maybe they're asking a little bit too much from trey young too early and they should have 
uh, let him like just go into in, in the superstar role because he's not Luka Doncic. Luka Doncic is like on a different level. I know their stats are the same, but Luka just has something about him, and I'm not sure yet that Trey Young has that. Now, like I said earlier, I think I misspoke about saying that the Atlanta Hawks pushed him into this role. Trey Young wanted this. Trey Young wanted to be the star, wanted to be in the playoffs fast. They wanted, he wanted the Atlanta Hawks to make moves in his second year. Not many young superstars asked for these moves to be made so early. So that may be uh, that may be something to see and that he's ready for this role. He's ready to be in the playoffs. He's ready for big winning moments with this Atlanta Hawks team. And if he is, the Atlanta Hawks are going to be good. But the reason why I'm skeptical is because I'm not sure if Trey Young is that player yet. I don't, I'm not sure if he's that player yet to carry a team into a second round, to carry a team to win a series. I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure if he's just empty numbers or not. I've seen Luka Doncic produce against the Clippers, basically beating the Clippers by himself in a game with a game winner to end it in a game without Chris Dasperidis. I've seen that with my own eyes. I haven't seen that with Trey Young yet, and I'm really interested to see if he can do it. I'm interested to see if he can push his team into the, into the playoffs because Danilo Gallinari is cool, Boyan Bogdanovic is cool, John Collins is cool, Cam Reddish, all these players that I've talked about, but none of this is even, even possible. Uh, their GM wouldn't have even done any of this if it wasn't for Trey Young because Trey Young is a generational type talent and he lent to Hawks eyes. So I'm really excited to see if he can step up into that role or not and if he just flutters out and does not do very well in his first time in some actual winning basketball. So Trey Young is obviously the biggest piece of it and I'm really excited to see him and the Atlanta Hawks play next year. Alright guys, that's all I got for you guys today in this video. If you like this type of content, like and subscribe on the video if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time.